Okay, um, so now let's talk about uh, no the normal equations. Um, these normal equations uh, tell us how we can find the best uh, vector of parameters of our model, but in a more, more direct way. So um, here we are going to use uh, linear algebra uh, tools to, to uh, find the best parameter. So suppose that we are given a training set of m examples, m points, uh, with each example consisting of n variables. These n variables represent uh, the factors that are going to be multiplying each of the parameters. Okay, let me go back to show this. Um, these variables would be, for example, x0, x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so here in this definition of the matrix x, we are considering that we have n variables and that in total we have m examples. So if you are talking about 100 examples and each example uh, has uh, n variables, this will be a matrix with 100 rows and 4 columns. And usually the first column is what we call the bias. So for every example we will have here a 1 number. Okay, so here this is the same the same matrix but we have let's say compressed this row into a, a vector and we are uh, transposing this vector it is important to remember that in these uh, slides when we say a vector we assume that the vector is a column vector not a row that's why here we have to write vector transpose to get a row okay just remember that a vector here is always a column vector. Now, in the same way that we can store all of our examples in a matrix, we can store the output uh, variables in a vector. In this case, if we have 100 points, we will have one, 100 outputs, and we can write them as this vector y. OK. so. Remember that we uh, need to minimize this uh, cost function. If we want to write this cost function now in terms of our matrix of data inputs x and our vector, uh, our output uh, vector y, we, we will need to write it at, as this product here, where um, here you will have when you multiply this x by the vector of parameters, you will have a vector. You can subtract this uh, from this other vector and you will get a vector that is a column vector. We transpose it and we will get a row vector. So this represents a row vector that you will need to multiply by itself but as a column vector here. And the result of that is going to be simply a number, which is a measure of the error of our current model H. So this is exactly this expression here, but using a matrix and a vector here for the parameters and another vector for the output variables. And we keep our min uh, our one over two uh, scalar here to, to simplify the the partial uh, derivatives. Now. And if we want to compute the gradient of this, we can simply say, okay, we need the gradient of this function j with respect of the vector of parameters theta. We can write like this. This gradient of this function is this result here, x transpose times x times the vector theta minus x transpose y. At this point, just believe that this is true. In the next slides, we will uh, show that this is really true. But at this point, just um, I just want you to, to focus on this expression 
and once we have computed this expression here what we need to do to minimize is this is the derivatives we need to equalize that to zero and then solve for our parameters uh, theta if you do that first you need to move uh, this to the other side or in this case we move this to the other side to the left side and then simply uh, move this to the right and we get this expression so this expression is important because it is telling you that if you want uh, to find the optimal parameters for your model if you store your examples in a matrix x and your outputs in a vector y then all you have to do is compute this product here and this is the matrix x transposed times the same matrix this is going to give you another matrix then you will compute the inverse of the matrix and the result is going to give you another matrix that you will multiply by x transpose and finally you will multiply by the output vector y after you have uh, computed this product you will get as a result another vector and that vector will contain the parameters of your model now this uh, looks very easy to do and the question here is okay if I can do this with a simple line of products why should we bother uh, learning uh, gradient descent for linear regression well the, the problem with this is that um, sometimes uh, or usually when you apply machine learning the number of examples that you have are simply too many so you have hundreds of thousands of examples or millions of examples and multiplying matrices of millions of rows is not that fast and even uh, worse once you have computed this product when you go and compute the inverse of the matrix it is very common to get here a singular matrix which means that it, uh, it is a matrix that does not have an inverse so one way to, to, to jump over that problem is to compute a pseudo inverse and for example um, MATLAB um, software and have, has some uh, numerical methods to compute pseudo inverse but as you can see you will start to get uh, problems when you want to do this okay, so usually uh, people prefer to to implement iterative methods instead of uh, trying these uh, products here because of the problems that you can get okay so now let's me uh, let's uh, talk about how we can get that uh, uh, gradient uh, from the cost function when we use just a linear algebra to do this uh, we will need some uh, equivalences some properties and we will start considering the trace uh, operator so suppose that a is an n by n uh, square matrix the trace of this matrix a is defined to be the sum of the elements of the matrix that are in the main diagonal so it's simply the sum of the elements in the uh, in the elements located in position ii where i go from 1 to n if you apply the trace of a real number the result is simply the same number now there are some uh, properties suppose for this uh, property that we have matrices a b c and d we know that the trace of the product a b equals the trace of the product b a 
in the same way if we have three matrices the trace of a times b times c equals the trace of c a b so in this case we simply move the c to the first place and the trace of this product is the same as the first one we, if we repeat that and move this b to the first place we will get the trace of bca and all all these three traces are the same okay by the way all these um, properties can be easily uh, proved if you define some generic matrices and you uh, compute the products you can show very easily that this is true all these properties are are true In the same way we have four matrices we can keep applying this rule like moving the last matrix to the first place and you will always get the same result uh, another property is that the trace of a equals the trace of the a transposed in the case of the sum if we have the trace of a plus b this equals the trace of a plus the trace of b if you want to compute the trace of a scalar a times big a this is the same as if you factorize the a or move it to the left so you have a trace of big a if you have uh, the gradient of the trace of product a b you want the uh, the gradient with respect of the matrix a this equals b transpose mm. this is a, a bit more uh, complicated here here in this case we have a function this f is a function but it's a function of a, of a matrix and here we are computing the gradient of that function with respect of some matrix a transpose and this equals the gradient of the function with respect of a and then we transpose the result of this gradient okay. all these uh, properties all these equations are going to be important to understand uh, the process of computing the gradient of the j function the cost function using linear algebra okay this is the last one that we're going to use and this is uh, the result is in two terms so we have this expression here again is a gradient with respect of some a transpose and this is the gradient of the trace of a b a transpose and c this is the same that b transpose a transpose c transpose plus b times a transpose c now let's go back to the definition of j we define the error like this product here um, from here to this step what we are doing is simply computing this product so you will have x uh, theta times x theta and you will get uh, theta transpose uh, x transpose then um, no so, sorry 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 here what we are computing first is this transpose so we have x trans x times theta transpose will be uh, to go in the other direction you need to write theta transpose times x transpose minus y transpose so in the first step we simply compute the transpose of the expression here inside once we have done that then we multiply so we will have this this term here times x theta and we have this first term here now theta transpose x transpose times y and he have a, we have a, a minus here so we have minus theta transpose x transpose y and then we multiply minus y transpose times x transpose x uh, theta and we get this third term minus y transpose x theta and finally we have minus y transpose times minus y 
and we get a plus y transpose y. Okay, now we introduce uh, the trace operator and one reason to be able to apply this is that if we consider this in the end this is going to give us a number and uh, the, the trace of a number a number is the same as the trace of the number so that's why we can introduce here the, the trace operator now we will uh, start using our properties that we saw before um, so we have this here in this step we simply uh, apply the trace to each of the four terms that we have here so we have here trace of the first term the trace of the second term and so on now using the property that the trace of a equal the trace of the transpose and also using that the transpose of the product abc is the same as the c transpose b transpose a transpose and we have that this term here the trace of theta transpose x transpose y which is this term here we can transform it into the trace of y t uh, y transpose x and theta applying these two rules here and this expression here is exactly the same as this one here so in other, in other words this and these are the same so we can rewrite it as two times this expression here so this term here just go down here exactly the same and these two here transform into only one term two times this expression now you can see here that we have dropped the last term which is the, the trace of y transpose y and the reason to do that is because in the end we want to compute derivatives with respect of theta and this term here does not contain any theta so it's uh, com it, it is uh, like computing the derivative of a, a number a constant so it will simply become zero that's why we don't have it here anymore now we need to still uh, simplify this um, we're going to use the, the, the last uh, properties first here in this step we simply apply the gradient to uh, explicitly to both terms here so now we have a gradient here also in the second term and then um, if we consider uh, that the trace of AB equals the trace of BA with A equals uh, making this A to be Y transpose and X and b to be uh, a theta uh, vector and we can we can i'm sorry we can um, we can rewrite this term here in this order okay applying these rules and finally if we take the last uh, large uh, property here making these replacements so if we consider a transpose to be theta and b uh, if we consider b to be x transpose x and we consider z to be the identity matrix then we can rewrite the expression uh, above uh, also considering the gradient of the trace of a b like b transpose and also considering a to be theta and b to be uh, y transpose and x so we can use this here to rewrite this part here and we can use these properties here to rewrite the second term and the result of that is that you get x transpose x theta and x transpose x theta these two terms you get it from these two terms using these replacements okay and this third term comes from this expression here and here using this property and it comes from this second term okay so this term generates two terms and this is only one term which is are these these last three terms 
and this can be simplified even more so this is the same like this so this is two times this expression and since it is two times and we have also a two here we can factorize the two and in the end we simply disappear this one half and we get this expression here which is exactly uh, the, the expression that we used before uh, to solve for theta and get sorry and get the final answer of how we can compute theta just as a product of these matrices x x transpose and the vector y